And you can see John just eyeing what I'm doing on the computer during commercial breaks, mm -hmm. aren't you, John? Mm -hmm. Well, some groups are now raising concerns about our privacy online. The ACLU says outdated federal laws are giving law enforcement some easy access to just about everything we put online, from pictures and Facebook posts to private emails, even what we're buying. That raises the questions as lawmakers attempt to update these laws. How much power should the government have in cyberspace? Joining us now to talk more about this, Morgan Wright, a cybersecurity analyst, and Joey Jackson, a former prosecutor and criminal defense attorney. Thank you for taking time out, both of you, from shopping online to join us today. <laughs> nice to have you. My yeah. pleasure. We'll get back to that well, later. <laughs> it'll only take a quick few minutes. You can get right back to it, Joey. So, Joey, if you wanted to search my private residence, in most cases, and I know that law is a little nuanced, you need a warrant to do that. Uh, to search my private happenings, ongoings on the internet, what do you need as a lawyer today? Well, well, here's the issue. It's a Fourth Amendment issue, as we know, and unreasonable searches and seizures. It's bedrock of our Constitution. It's very important. The problem is, Jenna, that we have an Electronic Communications Privacy Act, but it's 1986. That was when it was ultimately passed and signed by President Reagan. At that time, of course, you had Mark uh, Zuckerberg, founder of Facebook. He was in diapers. You didn't have Twitter. You didn't have Facebook. You didn't have the World Wide Web. So there's a real real need to update it. And the issue now is, under that law, if you had emails, right, if you have emails and they're over six months old, they're considered abandoned. So as a result of that, if the government wants to access them, they just have to show that there's a material need. It's part of an ongoing investigation. They get them. No worries. So do you, do, would younger, I know about that, Joey, by the way? Would I know if you were going through my emails from, you know, six months ago? Um, you, well, if they're, if they're prior to six months, then, of course, you need a warrant and you follow the requisite procedures procedures, you would enlist the court support, but if they're older than that, they're deemed to be abandoned and mm -hmm. they're not subject to the same protections, Jen. All right, so Morgan, you're the cybersecurity analyst that we call in when we talk about, you know, terror threats, for example, online, and that's the big argument for more government regulation and, or easy right. access uh, to cyberspace is to make sure that we can act quick enough to catch up to people who really want to do us harm. What's the right, right. balance? You know, uh, as somebody who's applied for these warrants before and has been involved in electronic intercepts, you have to balance the need for speed with the need for uh, observing the appropriate privacy. I think in this bill, if they strike the right time frame, which a lot of this says you've got 48 hours, if you've got uh, danger to somebody's life, it's a matter of national security, or you have characteristics of what would be called organized crime, you can go ahead, get the information, but you have to follow up in 48 hours with the warrant. 48 hours may be a little bit too small of a time frame, could be expanded to 72 or 96, but in this day and age, it's just one of the trade-offs you have to make. Do you want the information? And if so, here's the hoops you're going to have to jump through to get it. The alternative is really locking it down and saying from the start you have to get to a warrant. That would impede the ability for law enforcement to conduct these critical investigations at the snap of you a know, finger. And Morgan, you've worked as a detective. You've worked as law enforcement. And according, again, the, the, the bill that Congress is taking up, there's still some hypothetics. They're trying to work through some of the details. But initial reports said certain regulatory agencies like the National Labor Relations Board, like the Federal <laughs> Maritime Commission, right. would have access, warrantless access to emails. Why why would they need warrantless access to emails of American citizens? Well, you know, there are some regulatory agencies like SEC doing investigations, National Labor Relations Board. As, a, as a, somebody who came from law enforcement, you know, the justice intelligence field, I would have a problem giving that kind of unfettered access to too many government agencies. You know, you, you want the kind of oversight that comes with what law enforcement has now, the need to show probable cause, you know, uh, uh, the need to jump through the right kind of hoops to get to what they need. What you don't want is such a proliferation of expansion into people's privacy. We end up causing more issues, and then the end result being is law enforcement ends up with less than what they need, not more than what they oh, should be entitled to. You know, Joey, and I wonder on the legal side of whether or not we can make technology work for us. Will we ever get to a stage where you can text message a judge in the middle of the night, <laughs> ask for a warrant to search someone's email, and then that person is notified as well by text message or something like that? Do you ever see a scenario of that happening? Uh, I think the answer is yes. Right now, we wake judges up. We call them, and so absolutely. <laughs> How old-fashioned uh, old of us to call, and, right? And they're not happy about it. But the point is, is as you 
you mentioned, Jenna, and as Morgan states, it's about finding the appropriate balance. And I don't particularly think that applying for a warrant impedes in any way, shape, or form our law enforcement's ability to get the information they need. It's judicial oversight. It ensures that what they're doing is appropriate and correct. And, of course, it gives confidence to our citizens that Big Brother is just not unduly watching and looking at what we're doing on a regular basis. And again, this law from 1986 looking to be updated in this next Congress is something we're paying close attention to on this Cyber Monday. Back to shopping, gentlemen. Nice to have you both with us. <laughs> I can't today. wait. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. On it now.